I, mm -hmm. I'm destroyed. Like, I'm dead. But the view, I mean, look at this thing. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful Ha Valley, Bhutan. Today, I'm so excited because I'm finally going to see Tiger's Nest. Tiger's Nest is the number one attraction in Bhutan. Most people travel to Bhutan for the main purpose to hike up there. It takes roughly three hours to hike to the top to see the, see the monastery. And basically, the history of it is that in the 8th century, the second Buddha visited the site. And then in the 17th century, they built the monastery. So two and a half hour hike, three hour hike, all the way up. You see it. Then you come down, so total of five hours. And right now we're starting off with breakfast, and I have like the most traditional breakfast here in Ha. So what is this, my man? So it's like a wheat ball. So you open it? Do I just cut it or open it? So cut a small piece? Oh wow. It's just a wheat ball, like a super dense. So you put chilies on it, huh? Super spicy. Mm, thank you. <laughs> it's like a super dense wheat ball, basically. Look at this thing. Oh, it's gonna be hard to eat this. Oh, let's break it up by that. Oh, it's too spicy. Mm. What tea is telling me is to get some of the chicken. So it's chicken curry with chilies. We get a little bit. Mix it with this, right? Mm. That's nicer. Mm hmm. It is like no masala. It's more like a like a light uh, like a light gravy. Mhm. Mm mm. It's really filling, and I guess this is good for winter, right? It's really cold here. Roughly like negative five right now. Oh, it's hot, man. Guess I'll just get a little bit more. Personally, not my favorite breakfast, but it's decent. If you're really hungry. Eat the whole thing. I'm gonna keep it light today, especially with the chilies. I've been having too many chilies, just like off the chain. So now we have a two hour drive to Pado, and then we're gonna go on the hike. It's gonna be a long day. Are you ready? A buckwheat pancake and sausage. One last spicy bite, and let's go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're taking the same road that we came in on. There's two roads to enter Ha. The other one is like super under construction, very bumpy. It's not a good road to go on right now. It would take like five plus hours. So we're taking this road, which is super winding up the mountain. The cool part about this road is that at the very top you have, what's the name of the pass? Chilela. Chilela Pass, which is almost 4,000 meters above sea level. And from there you see both Ha Valley and you see Pado Valley. So yeah, I mean, super winding road all the way to the top. Then when you get up there, you see snow and you go down. On the way, it takes a little longer because you want to stop and get photos. On this way, you know, we're just gonna go straight. We're not gonna stop at all. Just get straight to Paro and then make it to the point where you start hiking to Tiger's Nest. So we'll update you in a bit. We are here in Chalela and today you could actually see the clear view of Mount Jomalhari, the mountain Jomalhari along with mountain Jujudake. Look at that view. Incredible, the Himalayas. All the way at the far end. See that snow? That's the tallest mountain, right? The one at the very the second, second tallest, tallest, second tallest, yeah. all the way over there. It's not a, it's not a wild horse. It belongs to someone. So usually, usually the owner they set the horse free so that they can go and do the grazing. It's a dry season, so it's really hard for the animals to get the grasses, the green grass. So the owner they just set the horses free. So after traveling for an hour and 45 minutes, we're entering Paro Valley. We're about 15 minutes outside the city center. Once we get there, we have to cross it and go to the other side. And from there, we're gonna get to the base of uh, the trek, right? So Tiger Nies, it's located in the north of Paro. So from the town of Paro, it will take around 20 to 25 minutes, right? This is the town of Paro. In Paro, you could actually see two different kinds of town. On this side, you could see all the houses are traditional one and if you go to the other side it's all concrete the new buildings and paro is also known as the souvenirs of bhutan and you'll know why i call it the souvenirs of bhutan all the ground floor the shops are handicraft shops so it's also the second largest city so after timpu this is number two and this is where the airport is and we're actually going to stop really fast and buy a mask this is my last day i'm just going to buy a mask at one of these shops one of them that's open and this is paro Beautiful spot. I was actually here on my first day. I ate right here. We're going to the same shop. 
So this is the one I want. So how much for that one? Perfect. So I bought the mask. It cost 8,500, which is a little over 100 US dollars, but I think it's worth it. It's huge. They didn't have a medium size. They have very small ones, and then that one. And so I decided to go with that one. I mean, I'm gonna keep it for life. You know, it's like on my wall forever. And then I got some stuff for my for my daughters. And we're ready. Thank you. Now we're driving 20 minutes to the bottom of Tiger's Nest. And as you can see, what we're going through is like small pieces of Paro that go along Paro Valley. So Paro, the main town is where we were just at. And then over here, it's an extension of the town. So basically, it's a farming community, right? So you have houses, you have a few restaurants, you have a rice paddy field. Oh, but dude, I'm excited. Two and a half hour hike though. It's gonna be a long one. <laughs> We're almost here, and you can actually see Tiger's Nest up there in the very top of the rock. Now I understand why it takes so long. <laughs> it's so high, oh my gosh. But the views from there are epic, right? Yes. And in case you guys are hungry, because I know we're going to be hungry, there's a cafeteria halfway, so you can stop and grab something quick and keep going. Yeah. Awesome. Here we go. Let's start this hike. So that's Tiger's Nest right there? Yes. Whoa. It's just there. Up on the rock. <laughs> just there. So you have to go through this entire forest and then eventually walk through and a path. Reaching up to the second viewpoint, we need to walk down the stairs all the way to a small bridge. We have a waterfall, then we have to clamp up the stairs. 10 minutes in, out of breath already. He told me this will be, will be some points where it's gradual, but right now it's only uphill. Uphill, lots of boulders, rocks, dirt. Roots. I mean, whew. I'm trying to do it as fast as I can. I don't want to do it in three hours. I want to do it like in two. Yeah, I can see why people take three hours. If you guys want to, you can take a pony up here, but it only takes you halfway. You would have to hike the rest. Whew. Woo! Halfway? No. <laughs> I think we're only 20 minutes up, but the sun. Definitely coming here like at 8 in the morning, <laughs> even earlier. It's already 11 something, 11.15. The sun's scorching. I have the sweater on because he's telling me that once we get inside into the forest area, it'll be cold and for sure in Tiger's Nest it'll be cold. <sighs> so I'm 42 minutes in. I'm actually almost halfway there because the cafeteria is right here. Tiger's Nest is above. I had to stop though because I haven't stopped. But it's super fast up. It's really hot though. Ooh, it's almost noon. It's scorching. Oh, I need to take a quick break. Catch my breath. Intense hike. Scale 110 is one of the most intense I've ever been on, like a 15. So my guide's uh my guy teased a little in shop because I made it here in roughly 50 minutes to the halfway mark. He said from here I can do it like another 45. So it'd literally be like under an hour, 45 minutes. And usually people take three hours. Obviously if we're going slow, taking your time, I'm speeding up. But I'm starving so I'm gonna have something here. And this is the cafe, so it's like a restaurant. It's gonna have some rice, some egg curry, something quick, light. I'm gonna sit right here. Beautiful traditional building. Oh. I need a rest. So this is lunch. Egg, chili, potato, radish, dal, red rice. It's gonna have some red rice. Starving. Burned the hell out of me. Mm-hmm. Best thing to do is drink this. If you did this hike at 8 in the morning, the best thing to do would be go all the way up and then come back down for lunch. But because it is almost noon, I have to eat. Get some of these potatoes. They're good, hot. Mm -hmm. Nice, soft. The radish is creamy. Mmm, so good. There's some of the radish, like gravy on there. No sauce. Today I'm not gonna eat the chilies. Take a break. This egg. Nice scrambled egg. Nice and oily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one's like drenched in butter. Well guys, I'm just gonna enjoy the rest of this and then continue my hike. Mm. Right outside of the cafeteria is a small terrace. You can sit down there, get some awesome views of Tiger's Nest. But I'm good, I'm gonna continue. Still got a long way to go. He said roughly 45 minutes at my speed. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, to do it at my speed again because 
I really ran. Oh, this is a lot steeper. So we have Tyre's Nest right there. Up here, we have a few other temples. So we're almost at the viewpoint. Now it's become more gradual. Trees, lots of shade here. See Tyre's Nest right there. So I'm guessing once we make the bend here, we'll have the viewpoint right there. Still got this to go through though. I'm out of breath. And now we're starting to see the monastery we saw from the bottom. There's like three or four right here. And then once we get past this ridge right here, we'll have the viewpoint, I hope. Almost, right, 100 meters? Not really 100 meters. More? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could see it here. I mean, it's a great yeah. shot, but yeah, there's a few yeah. trees. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, there's Tiger's Nest. Woo, look at this. What a view. Tiger's Nest, yes. We made it. Well, we made it to the viewpoint. Still got a bit to go to get actually into it. And by the way, I can't film inside. No photos inside. I just take you to the door and that's it. So am I the fastest ever? No. No? No. <laughs> I had come on. It was like eight years before. We just took like one hour, 15 minutes all the way up. What? One hour, 15 minutes. He was running up. I did it, I got here in 90 minutes and I ate though. Mm -hmm. I, I'm destroyed, like I'm mm -hmm. dead. But the view, I mean look at this thing, incredible. Let's go, let's go inside. From the top till to the bridge, we have 453 and from the bridge to the monastery we have 287. Wow. So in total like when you do it two four, it may be like 1,500 steps. So. Something really interesting you guys have to know is that in 1998, there was a big fire. So they rebuilt the entire monastery. But before that, there was no railing and these steps weren't here. So to get here was really risky. I mean, dirt road and yeah. you can easily fall. I mean, look at that, look at that even boulder. The size of the footpath was small. Oh, sure. This is scary. I mean, even now it's scary. I mean, if you're scared of heights, look at that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So we made it all the way to the bottom. Right here we have a waterfall. There's snow here. So it snows here in winter. Wow, look at that. Incredible, and it still hasn't melted. I have not. So now we have how many steps? 287. Not bad. 287 difficult steps. Just counting them. I think it's like 48, 50. <laughs> I don't even know, I'm not counting anymore. I'm exhausted. Oh, it's great though. What an experience. So we made it here to security. Now we have to pack up everything in the backpack, put it in a locker, yes. and that's it. That's it. That's your locker. <laughs> and that's it. We saw Tiger's Nest, 17th century monastery. This place is a must visit. When you come to Bhutan, this is the number one thing you have to do. Try to get it in. You know, maybe the first day, just go early in the morning. I'd say start at eight in the morning, hike up all the way, and then see it. It's made up of different shrines dedicated to the second Buddha, and it's incredible. I lit a butter lamp, uh, you know, making a prayer basically for my friends, family, and everybody affected by the COVID-19. And uh, yes, yeah, so we're gonna hike all the way back, all the way back, yeah. make it to the car, and where are we going? And we, we will be going to the fortress of Paro, which is called as Rimpung. Rimpung means a pile of jewels. It was built in 1646 AD. Yeah, so I'm not gonna bore you with the hike. I'll see you in the car. <laughs> Whoa, that was an intense hike down. I thought it was gonna be a lot easier than that, but you can slip so easily. You can outrun, you have to go super slow. Oh man, that was too much. Okay, let's go to the fortress. Car's right here. Took me four hours to go up and come down with lunch. Man, man, I made it. You good? Yes. We, I didn't have a Tibetan saint called Thong Thong Galpo. He came to Bhutan and he wandered from like place to place searching for the iron ores. So in Bhutan and Tibet, he built around 108 iron chain bridges. And he was the one to like build that temple in 15th century. So we just crossed the river. What's the name of the river? 
Dochu. Dochu River, okay. Dochu. So Dochu River, and we're on the other side of Paro. So this is the big valley, right? We're on the other side, up on the mountain, and we're going to the fortress. Now this fortress, the unique thing about it is that it's one of the most beautiful fortresses in the country, and it was built before Tiger's Nest. So 1600s, right? 17th century? Yeah. Another 17th century. Everything was built in the 17th century in Bhutan, yeah. mostly. That was like the height of the kingdom. Yes. It's the time where the unifier, the Tibetan scholar, unified the whole country. So in order to unify, he built like lots of fortresses in and around Bhutan. The fortress of Paro, it was built in 1646 AD. And the name of the fortress is called as Rimpum, which means a pile of jewels. Woo! It's windy here. Super windy. Wow. What a beautiful fortress. Yeah, it reminds me of the one in Punaka. Very similar. I love that. So that's like rank, right? Yeah, it's called Skopne in Bhutan. Seminal scarf, depending upon different ranks. Like I said, we have like different colors of scarf. For the commoner like us, we get the white one. And the white symbolizes the purity. <laughs> the four directional kings. And I hope you still remember the Wheel of Life. Yes, the six dimensions, right? Or yes. six uh... kingdoms or realms. God, Jimmy God. As we enter the fortress, you can see it's very, very windy right now because we're by the river. And the fortress is a little smaller than the Punaka Fortress and the Thimpu Fortress. As we walk through, you see the different uh, gods here. Here, this part is for the administration, all the head offices of the district is located here and this is the central tower the central tower usually divides the administration and the monastic body so basically every fortress is the same they all have administration area and they have a monastic body and then right here so that tower is used by the monks and what i noticed is the biggest difference between all the fortresses is that there's a lot of color up here and what is this building this was residences no no it's administration offices oh that's administration offices right there okay administration offices monks use this so the dormitories or like the residences it's, the other side. it's the other side okay oh beautiful colors i mean the colors they just don't end so every single house has the same windows and always painted with these colors yeah and with all the, the letters right yes none of the other fortresses had like a lower layer right like a lower uh, level right the total number of monks in this fortress is around 160 you should check down check by the side of the river you could see a palace that has been built in 1900 by the governor of Paro and nowadays when the royal families they come here they use the palace I mean this is the best view of Paro yeah best view you have the main town right there and then you have the, all the rice fields mm -hmm. you have the river gorgeous can you see the airport down there Oh, there it is. Yes. Right there. Here, it's a ritual cake. Usually, most of the ritual cakes in Bhutan are made from wheat and cooked rice. The pattern, which looks like a flower, it's been made from butter, cow butter. So the reason you see roosters inside the fortresses is because in olden days, there was no alarm clocks, obviously. So they use the rooster to wake them up. So that's their alarm clock. So that goes off like at 5, 6 in the morning. So they wake up early. Cold is good. So that was all the offerings, right? Yeah. A kind of a, it's a layer cake. What is for you? All right, so we did it. Today we drove from Ha Valley all the way mm -hmm. to Paro. Yeah. Started off with some delicious breakfast. It wasn't breakfast, big dough that you yeah. add chili on top. Mm -hmm. Unique, uh, I don't know, it wasn't really my favorite. <laughs> I, I like more like, I don't know, some of the easy stuff. But yeah, then after that we drove two hours over to Paro. Then we went to Street Tires Nest. We hiked up, we took us like, I think like two hours and we ate lunch at the same time. So we had a good lunch. I mean, it's just a cafeteria, just standard food, not like crazy chilies and stuff. Yes. Not too much a uh, heavy meal in terms of non-veg, mostly veg. Veg. Mostly veg. And then we made it up to Tiger's Nest. Incredible experience there. The monastery is once in a lifetime. When you come to Bhutan, you have to go there. When you go inside, you see different shrines dedicated to the second Buddha, which is the one who basically went there and uh, got rid of the demons, right? Yeah. Got rid of the bad spirits. And converted Paro Valley into Buddhism. Okay. It was in 8th century and the temple of 
Tiger, yes. It was built in 1692, 17th century. And one thing that's really cool when you go there, look for the cave. Your guide should show you the cave. And that is where they used to see a tiger. And that's why they call it Tiger's Nest. Yes. And then after that, we came here. This incredible fortress. Beautiful. So it's an experience. You have to visit all the fortresses. Visit Punaka, Timpu, and Paro. Wow. And guys, if you love this video, thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> Comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Bhutan. Peace.